Stop at verse 5. So whatever that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, you must bring it down. You must subject it and bring it down. Is that correct? Stop at verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. We take captive every thought. To now make listen, it... we take captive. That means you can arrest thoughts. You see, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop a bird from building a nest on your head. You can't stop evil thoughts from passing on your head. I was thinking, I was saying, what if I'm in heaven and I think something bad? Yes, I, I, I think very deep. And something says, shut up, shut up, you can't think something bad. It's not possible because there's no evil. And I was trying to understand, what do you mean there's no evil? I can just, I've been to earth. I can just collect one evil thought from earth and just project it. He said, no, that the evil thought cannot gain access to heaven. Ooh. Does that make sense? Because every evil thought that comes to you came through a demon. Every single evil thought that comes to you come through a, a demon. And demons are not allowed in heaven. So those thoughts cannot come in heaven. There's no evil thought you ever thought by yourself. There is a spirit that whispered it to you. I told you they are like monkeys. They hang on your shoulder and they whisper into your ears. Demons, they whisper into your ears. And when they whisper it, the Bible says that don't be afraid that it is being whispered. But hold it into captivity. Arrest the thoughts. So thoughts are spirit beings. So thoughts are spirit beings. When you see a thought, you see it as a, it's just me thinking. When you see it as a being, you know you can arrest it. And how do you arrest it? You bring the knowledge of God above it. There is a warfare going on in the spirit. Every single day of my life, I warfare. And every single day of your life, you warfare. And I will show you how to disarm the kingdom of darkness. I will show you how to disarm the kingdom of darkness. I will show you how to bring them down. Can you go to 1 Peter 5, 8-9? Using spiritual weapons. First Peter 5, from 8 to 9, yes, read. Be alert and sober Now, the Bible is saying be alert. Now, a soldier is trained to always be at alert. Have you ever wondered, see, there's something that, do you know that you see more from your back than you see from your front? Do you know you see more from your back than you see from your front? Why is it that when you are facing front, if someone starts looking at you at your back, you know someone is looking at you? How do you know? Because your physical eye limits your sensitivity. But the place you can't see, your spirit is heightened to sense. Gosh. People want to see with their eyes. Your eyes has weakened you already. Your eyes allows you to see. So you know nobody can come to this distance. But if your eyes is closed, your every step is calculated. You begin to, do you know that if you want to, if you want to sense the wind, you close your eyes. To, why can't you open your eye to feel the breeze? If you want to feel the breeze, if you want to enjoy nature, you don't go to the garden with your eyes open. You go to the garden with your eyes closed. Only then can you feel it. Because nature cannot be seen, but can be felt. How do you know that it, the, the grasses are soft? Even with your eyes, you can't determine how soft it is until you remove the shoes and you feel it. And you close your eyes and the breeze begins to blow through you. Have you ever taken water and it felt like the water, the cold water just poured in your heart? You just took a cold water, you just feel like showered in your heart and your heart just got cold and you want to take another one so it will not happen again. Do you know that feeling? You're sensitive. So that is how you must be sensitive to the thoughts that comes out of your mouth. Oh God, I'm tired of this life. Be careful what you're saying. Oh God, this my child is the problem. Be careful. Because you thought you are the one saying that in out of anger. But trust me, the devil is speaking through you. 
all the devil needs is for you to release the prophecy over your own head and the devil will make sure that prophecy is fulfilled please read read be, start from eight again be alert and of sober he said, mind be alert and of sober mind that means don't be drunk drinking makes you to lose your alertness if i can use such words because when you are drunk, you are not under the influence of your own understanding. You are under the influence of demonic possession. Alcohol is a demonic possession. Because whatever controls you is a God. The Bible says, do not be slave to anything, but be slave to the Holy Spirit. Whatever you are slave, whatever controls you, you are a slave to it. And anything that controls that is not God is demonic. There's nothing like yes, maybe, or no. It's either yes or no. You cannot say, I'm in between heaven and earth. That is a lie. You are either in heaven or you are in hell. He said, be sober. As a soldier, you don't drink in the war, for, in the war front. As a soldier, you don't take anything that will intoxicate you. But if you must be drunk, we have the Holy Ghost. If you must be drunk, drink of the Holy Ghost. Is the drunkenness that enhances sin, that, that heightens your spiritual capacity, that allows you to wage war. In, ah, yeah, God, I, I don't know if someone is getting what I'm preaching. I think I'm preaching to myself. I, I, are you following what I'm preaching? Let this message not leave your mind. Let this message not leave your mind. Please read again, ma'am. Be alert and of sober mind. Mm. Your enemy, the devil. Do you know why he said be alert and of sober mind? Be of sober thoughts. Do not be intoxicated with thoughts. You can be intoxicated with thoughts. I know I've been in that part of life where thoughts were coming to my head. I can't process any of them. I shared it with you on Tuesday. Thoughts were coming to my head. I can't process even one. Do you know that a man that you see that is mad is still alive but mad? The realness of that man is trapped within himself. A madman is like a man that is locked up in himself and is screaming for help, but his body cannot react to the screaming of help. I'm like a man of God, how did you know? Have, I, have you been mad before? Sometimes you can have an issue with your spouse. Everything is going okay. Because you, but she might be making the point that is affecting you. You are looking for a point. You can't find any other point. You go to her school days and bring a point. Something you know you have forgotten. You don't even care about it. You go there and bring it. Because you are looking for what? Weep on. And you throw at her. Then when she begins to weep, you're like, eh uh-huh. She I tell you, say, you did talk now. You know, Sabi talk, I gave my own. But that thing you vomited, you don't even feel it. But that thing is enough to destroy the argument. All you wanted to do is to win the war. That's why the Bible says that be of sober mind. Let your thought be purified. That is why you need to cast your thought on everything that is good. It's like, for example, if I send you to do something, if, I, if you delay, I'll do it myself. Not because I'm upset. Because I feel you don't understand the urgency of that thing. Does it make sense? The moment you see yourself as a part of a church, you take responsibility more than the pastor. The reason why certain things and you're not responsible in church, you are not, you, you cannot give account of anything in church is because you've not seen yourself as a part of the church. You are seeing the church as the church of the pastor, not your church. You are seeing it like, it's, the name of the church is CEO ministry. It's Chukwe Mecca Imano Keke ministry. It's his ministry, not my ministry. That ministry holds the key to the success you have. You are looking for. I tell you that any man of God I meet that does not bless me is owing me. Every single man of God I've sold in their life is owing me. And I expect them to grow. If they don't grow, they are, they are slowing me down. If God appears to someone like Prophet Joel or Apostle Tochuku now, and God appears and says, Apostle Tochuku, henceforth, anyone you touch, we know everything about the Bible. What do you think will happen to me? I will know everything about the Bible. Because I've sold into his life. So if I meet him, I say, Oga, the gift you have is not for you, it's for me. Oh yeah, touch me. That is why sometimes you pray heavily for your pastors. There are some anointing that you are seeking for. 
that you have not grown enough in the spirit to carry those anointings, but your pastor has matured to carry it, but he has not come. Pray that he carries it. The moment he carries it, he will find a way to release it to you. Your prayer is selfish. That is why you don't grow in the spirit. Oh, I thank God for people that are praying for me that I don't even know. I know somehow someone is somewhere that I don't know who this person is. But this person carried CEO ministry and his member in his head or her head. And she might be somewhere in the mountain. I don't know her. And I might never see her. And God will just appear. An angel will just appear and say, this is CEO ministry. Pray for this ministry. She might not even be in Nigeria. One day a friend of mine told me, he said, Emeka, I opened an intercessor group for you. There are people that are intercessors that are praying on your head. Your name is with them. Their job is to pray for you. I was like, why did you do this? Think every time a man of God comes out here to preach, you don't know the weapons, the thoughts of the enemy that are released to them. That's why someone will come and handle Mike. After handling Mike, the next day they are, you see them in a clubhouse. You think that's natural? That is the attacks of the enemy. A man preach against fornication, the next day you catch him fornicating. Whatever you preach against comes to tempt you. Know that now. Whatever you stand bold enough to defend. You say anger. I have dealt with anger that very day. My wife will tell you about it now. That day, everything that will provoke you will come your way. You, you come to the church and say, masturbation never, never. That day you'll be lonely. And the thoughts to masturbate will feed your mind. Say, oh, you spoke against us. Let's see. So that when you fall into that addiction, you can't preach against it. Most times, men of God, some men of God find it hard to preach against masturbation and fornication. It's because they are involved in it. How can you preach against what you are involved in? Your conscience will not even allow you. Then they will tell you, don't preach evil. Don't preach evil. Look unto Christ. Look unto Christ. Look on. I'm not saying that all of them are like that. If all of us are preaching Christ, who is preaching the device of the enemy? You must not be like everyone. Don't do things because others are doing. Do things because you are called to do it. Let me tell you, you not, not every man of God has the anointing to take the life of someone. I'll stop there. Hey, my, my sister, preach, 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 preach to us. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls like a roaring now, lion. Now, he, he said that your enemy. He didn't say our enemy. He personalized it. Peter is saying your enemy. For you to know that it's not about us. Don't say our enemy. Because if you say our enemy, you can be sleeping. I'll be fighting the enemy because it's our. Hello? I want you, when you read the Bible, read the content, the intent, and the context of the word. Because if you say our enemy... You will say, eh, since it's our enemy now, let my brother Mike and sister Chinwe be fighting. Let the man of God be sleeping. They'll be defending. After all, it's our enemy. But the Bible is saying that the devil is not coming as our. It's coming peculiar to you. The devil is dealing with you like you. He knows your weakness. He deals with you with your own weakness. Personally. He said, your enemy, the devil, did what? Devil crawls around like a roaring lion. He comes around, moves around like a roaring lion. He roars, but he is not a lion. He only acts like a lion, but he's the lion that is toothless, a toothless lion. He has no teeth to bite, but he has the, 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 the charisma to make you afraid. That is why when you see the works of the devil, you are like, Jesus. The Bible says on that day, we say, Is this this man that shook the works of this earth? Is it this thing? You might be shocked that he's a short man. And you will be like, the Bible said that we will say, is it this one that shook the pillars of this earth? This thing? That's what we will say. And he will come there. But yet, you call him, is this this thing? Yet the wisdom he carries to manipulate men. He had the wisdom to deceive one third of the angels. That's why the Bible said that I've given you power against all things. Against scorpions, against the, the works of the enemies. The devil only comes like a lion. He is not. When he, he, that's why he's afraid of opening his mouth. He only roars. Because when you hear the sound, you get scared. 
But if you come closer to him, you see that he's toothless. 